Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ah, Lilu Nishmasi Mimirosi was before the Chai. Siata the Shmaya. Hi, love the Shir. So excited that the Shir in Hebrew, the about the Shir in Hebrew, although I'm an English speaker, I'd love to watch the English Shir to be part of the full MDY experience. However, I can't because it's only posted on YouTube, which my filter blocks. Baruch Hashem. Can you start posting it on Torah anytime? And thank you so much. Yaakov Kellner, Cleveland, Ohio. Bez Hashem, it's going to be on all platforms. Bez Hashem. What's up, group? Yeah, but you have to know how to do it. Dear Rebbe Moiri, I've listened to you share every day since somewhere in Masechus Megillah. This is coming from Yisrael Rothman, the father of Yonah Rothman, who sat here the other day. If you remember, he came to Yisrael one and a half years ago for the first time. You remember? You guys remember that? Guy came first time in 52 years. They told him, you come to the shear, the whole thing. I had this chus next to you the day we learned Yvamas Daf Kuf. I also had this chus to dance with him in Flatbush, Miami, most recently the same Sachs Kiddush in Connecticut. Since we're in the Sugi of Bar, it would be appropriate to mention a Gavaldic of Bar from the Gra on the Pasuk. V'chiyiftach ish bar, oikiyichir ish bar. Now take a look, I, I just put it in. I never put a, a chart for the email. Here it is. The gross says, it's the gross. The gross says, why does bar not have a vav? The first bar, it's not on, Gary. So you look at that screen. That screen so far is on. So the first one bar has a vav, the other one doesn't have a vav. So says Yonah Rothman's father, Rabbi Sroll Rothman. He answers, that Kiftach was covered and removed it. Um, to tell us that if someone dug nine Tfachim and the second guy dug one Tfach, the second guy is Chayv Nezik, if a Shor Hamar fell on the bar, so it says Kiftach that, that he opens a bar of ten Tfachim. Nothing is missing. So therefore it says bar with a Vav. But Kiyichira, he's Chayv, he digs one Tfach in a bar that's nine Tfachim. That's why it says Kiyichira without a Vav that was missing a Tfach. Chaim in the bar, even for a bar that's chaser and nine fach. Especially so, Rothman, father of you, Rothman. Thank you to his wife for typing this. Danny Sher, please don't let anyone interfere with the idea, concept of drawings, diagrams, whether stills, video format. My reason is simple, yet vital. Every day when I sit down, excitedly, thanks to you to do the daf, I make a concerted effort to remember the previous daf before starting the new one. Under normal circumstances, I would really remember clearly, if at all. However, I have a cheat, like the youngsters have in their video games. But my cheat's 100% kosher. I have, a, I have a look at yesterday's visual aids. A better way to describe it, he says. <laughs> visual aids. Not charts. Visual. And that immediately jogs my memory. It's an amazing tool. It really is. After looking, watching the drawings, video, I remember and can launch into the next daf with vigor. His slav is in the Mammy Lashon. So please, please don't ever stop using them with tremendous accords of Toyev Yutalmin. Danny Sherer, Manchester, UK. To be kind, the Chvay Rebelli. I was surprised that you said that a, pike, a short Pikeach learned in Harvard, which is for the anti Semites, but not in Oxford University where the Axon learned. Sure. Anyway, he says, when I was something about the Hanukkah Menorah, and the fish heads, you blew out the flame, a flame especially that of a menorah is connected to the neshama, a person in the Sapikabolo should not blow out candles. Somebody looked this up quickly. I want to know if this is real or AI. He says that this was in New York. They brought camels. I was saying that there's no camels in Borough Park. Here it is. Our shepherd raises the world to support living at Toyota. The Tanshmi shows camels where they do not usually walk. From yesterday, they show up in New York, Mamish, only this time of the year to illuminate the cycle of the daf. Formed the Radio City Music Hall. So I guess it's real. Mike Harris in Boynton Beach, Florida. Halpern knows him, Rabbi Halpern himself. Shalom Aleichem. What's your name? Hi, Rubenstein from Afula. I didn't mean to make you get up, but okay. Now Shalom Aleichem, nice to meet you from Afula. How are you doing, Tzadik? You feeling better? Wow. Had a little fall over there, I heard. Yeah. Stick a bike accident. Okay, Rafur Shlema. The coil of the day, Tzvi Korlin, Lezech Nishmas Bat Yelisheva Bas Rochel, Safta Tzubeli. Ah! I think I know this person, Safta Tzubeli. The Mesechta, 
Uh, we used to live next to the Tzubeli, the Ramat Hanan, uh, the family friends. The Masechta, I think he's talking about that person. Masechta for the unity of Am Yisrael. The Parnasa Chodesh, Lidin Shmaz Zachai Ben Moshe, Lidin Shmaz Zachai Bas Yosef. Parnasa Chodesh, Yosef Ben Chai, sorry for all this chusim that come from support in the Emirat Torah. Parnasa Yoim, Mordechai Aaron, dedicated in memory of my dear mother on her yard side, Leah Bas Borcha Koyim. Parnasa Yoim, Lidin Shmaz Yitzchok Tzvi Meir Ben Binyom and Shrag of Fayel Chaim. And a golden dove alert. If you're new to the shir, when we were learning brachas, I think, yeah, brachas of nun gimel. What what daf is it? The dove alert. What? Nun beis and nun gimel. The we there's a story there with the doves. That the guy went to get a the guy the tana went. He wanted a bench where he ate, so he made up a story that he forgot his gold or whatever back in the rest stop. So they had a turnaround, so he was able to bench, but he got a golden dove. And since then, official uses that as his golden dove alert. Mazel tov to Ner Tomid, MD Wire, Simcha, and Margie on the birth of a daughter. Mazel tov. Mazel tov the grandparents, Fisher, Sarah Lee, Safta, Susan, Cherry, Greer, and great grandmothers. Belly Gross, Razel Snow, special Mazel tov. Third generation MD Wire, Shimmy, age six. Fisher wrote to me that he learned the daf once in a while and his newest sister, I think that's what he wrote it. Mir Hashem, golden doves for all. The art of the day, sponsored by Anonymous. Shkoyach Anonymous. So here's the Shaila. It's going to become pretty clear through the so you know, I don't know if very clear. Some people had issues with this thing. If there's a phenomenon here in Eretz Yisrael, people light the Minoira. And some people even light with a silver minayra and they're not so worried because they live let's say on the second floor if they live outside usually you use a cheap one some people lock it up so this guy goes Maisa Shahaya he takes a friend puts him on top of like this uh, elevated truck sometimes they use the truck for, for dancing singing purposes or whatever the elevated van the guy stands on the van, they drive by the second floor, and they yank down menorahs, silver menorahs. Ganovim, Ganovim. The question, the guy that yanks it off the poor, the second floor, is a Ganov. What about the guy that drives the van? Deliberately, he's driving his friend to steal. Is he also, is he a shutav in the Gnev or not? He's definitely an accomplice in, 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 in American law. He wouldn't be able to reach there without. Oh, oh, I just heard a beautiful thing. Who said that? You said Yosef? Like the blind guy and the cripple. Beautiful. Ah, that's mama shit. The famous story with the a guy put two people to watch an orchard. One was blind, one was crippled. So the crippled guy got on the blind guy's shoulders and the blind guy uh, walked. And the crippled guy directed him and they, with, like that they stole and they were both chayev. Very good, Yosef. Says the Gemara over here, we're holding Dafnun Bezim with Bezim on the bottom. If an animal falls forward because he got startled by a loud noise, the Mishnah says Chayiv. If he fell backwards, he's Potter. What does forwards, what does backwards mean? Omarav, the fun of, the fun of Mamish. It means literally head first. La Achrov, Achrov Mamish means literally on his back, on his tail. Bibar. We're talking about a bar, and the Gemara does a little chazara here. Dafnun gimel omer alaf on top. Rav letamei. Rav goes according to his own shita. The Omar Rav bar shkiva lav toyer lehevloi v'loy lechavatoi. Rav says that the reason why you're chayav when an animal falls into a pit is not from the the impact, because the impact is caused by the ground, and you don't own the ground. You you created a bar b'shus harabim, and you dug. It's not your ground, but it is your bad ear. In fact, there's a story here in Israel, I don't know how long ago, maybe a year or so ago, a kid fell into a pit, and they lowered down a guy or two into the pit, and they both died from, like, the fumes. Anybody remember the story? About 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Isn't Shemitah just... Oh, the guy's alive. He's in a coma. 
happened in Madrid school. Okay, so anyways, there is a concept of a foul ear, of lack of oxygen, I don't know, of poisonous gases, whatever you want to call them. Toxic gases. Huh? I'm not saying that that's exactly what happened, that that's what the Gemara is talking about, but I'm just giving you... So I struggle with it, I think a lot of people are struggling, what's this Hevel business? Ten to them down, so there's something like that. It's a thing. So... Rav says, you don't, you don't pay because of the impact, you pay because of the foul ear. And therefore what? Therefore, if you fall forwards, he's getting a nice dose of that poisonous gas of that ear. If he falls back first, so his head is upwards and he's breathing fine. Says Shmuel, even if you fall backwards, you're chayev, because he holds, certainly, if you get a bang, impact, and also from the ear. But the problem is, that the Mishnah says, that if you fall backwards, you potter. It says, before in the Mishnah, if you fall backwards, you potter. He tripped over the pit, but he fell, Next to the pit, outside of the pit. Here, uh, it's not 100% accurate, but take a look at this. He's walking over here. He heard a lot of noise from the pit. He got startled. And then he, uh, but he should have been tripping over. He didn't fall in the pit. That That's the point. He fell outside of the pit. He fell on his back. It's from the noise that he, he tripped. Okay. So it came from the bar. I don't think that he's high of to pay because the damage came from within the bar. It says, literally the opposite of what Rav says. It says, Even backwards, Chayov. Do you have to the Rav? I mean, and really, it's a cash in the Mishnah. Okay. It says, Mufurish, that if you fall backwards, you're Chayov. That Bryce is talking about that a guy dug a, a pit in his own property. And his own property, what happened, like we said many times, he was mafkir everything around the bar, but he kept the bar itself. So the bar is his. Now think about it. The whole reason why Rav says that you potter from impact in Rosh Hashanah is because you don't own the bottom of a pit. Right? You dug out dirt. You d- dig out one layer of dirt, the dirt that, that's there is not yours. It was always there, and you just uncovered it. You dug out another layer, you, he uncovered the bottom of the pit, but it's not his. It's Karkailam. But if it's in your own resource and you own it, so it is yours. And if it's yours, and you cause an animal to fall in there because you gave up your property, you were mafkir it. And that's why a, a shark fell in there. Now you're Chayim. If the animal died because of the foul ear, again, I rav hold that you're mechayev from for the bad ear. And if he died from the impact, it's my the bottom of the pit is yours. So Another pshat. We have a few pshatim here. The question is, it says mufurish in the brayso that if a, if an animal falls backwards. On his back, you're chayav. But Rav says that if he falls backwards, you potter. You only chayav if you fall forwards because it's bad here. This is Rabba, super interesting. You know, they say that if you throw a cat out the window, no matter how you throw it, feet up, head down, doesn't matter, it'll always land on his feet. So that's what happened over here, sort of. Here we have a stickle video. Huh? No, never did that. I was not into that. Although, here, take a look what happens here. This is slow motion, boom. So I need to show it again. Basically, the cow falls in head first, and because of that, it got a dose of that poisonous gas. Mid-ear, it knows it doesn't want to fall on its head, so flips over on its back. Here, watch, stop, stop right over there, and then it flipped over. But by the time it got to the green line, it already had a dose of bad ear. So Rav holds that the bad ear is what killed him. The fact that he fell on his back, 
Doesn't potter him. How's that guy? Yeah, it doesn't, air doesn't affect How's that guy? Is he like an oxygen mask or something? <laughs> Just curious. Where's that guy? He's still going. He's like a miracle we man. We have a lot of kashas on this art. <laughs> He's, 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 uh, he's, he's, he has a snorkel or he's wearing a scuba diving gear or human beings are not affected to the same effect and I saw in some Rechreinim that say other, there's many many Pshatim maybe he held his breath there's a lot of Pshatim, you want to go into more? he's breathing that the jackhammer, you know how jackhammers work? they work on compressed air and he's breathing from that compressed air that's coming out. There's a lot of different tirutzim. But I ain't in the achroinim. Gevaldi. Okay. Rav Omar, Ochem HaEskino B'Mesapech. But you get the point? The point is that even though the animal's on its back, and Rav typically holds that if he falls on his back, he's potter. But over here, he got a nice dose of this terrible, <laughs> obnoxious ear. It could be that this is like a fight, whatever. He flipped over. You found him on his back. This bad air that he, that he ingested got him. And that's what killed him. Okay. I just thought I, I thought it would be interesting. Nobody felt it was interesting at all. But a, a guy won a Nobel Prize. But it's the IG Nobel. It's the, the, the Nobel that makes fun of Nobel. He, 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 what? Ignoble. 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 The kids are, I think, I think there's a Maisa Shoya, that he, he won a prize because he made a study that every time you put butter on your toast and the toast falls, it always falls on the butter side. And he did a whole study why that happens. I just thought it would be interesting. And then, if I'm not mistaken, the next year, a guy won the prize because he had a Shiloh. What happens if you butter the top of a cat? Does he land on his feet like he always does? No, I got out of the honey bee, honey bee. The voice of Omar. That's all I care about. That's the my that's my indicator. The voice of Omar. Hocha bin is gay boy bishar askin on another pshat. A boy say, what's the Shiloh? If an animal landed on its back. Why, according to Rav, is he chayav? According to Rav, you only chayav when you get knocked out from the obnoxious ear. Noxious. Nef- noxious. N- noxious ear. I should just use words that, that we used in. Not obnoxious. Noxious. You're right. I just thought. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Stop. Stop. I'm no, with Don't stop him. Don't. Don't. He has to continue. What are you doing? <laughs> You don't want to I, I, I'm supposed to be like say uh, silly words. Okay, it's obnoxious ear. It's an ear that wants to be mazikim. Listen to this. Rabbi said this will answer your kasha. We're talking about a bar in Rosh the, This bull had no business coming in there. I'm allowed to make a a, a bar in my rishos, a cistern of water. Is that how you say it? I have. I need. I need to. I need some. Uh, I need to save my water. Yeah. So I have a bar in my backyard. That comes a bull into my backyard, jumps into my backyard. It is what Yoshi did, and he soils my water. So he's chayev. I don't care if he fell on his uh, front way or back. The bar is the, the guy is chayev. What's the chiddush b'chal? That's that's the. Uh, or. I mean, just yesterday I showed it at the wrong time here. Now the water became dark and soiled. Okay. So that, you know, we, should have done, we should have done it backwards. That's the truth. In this case, the bull should have been upside down. That's the chiddush. That even though he's upside down, he's still chayev. Or, as we had yesterday, this guy, mamish a maizah shahaya, that he fell in. This is, you see, this is a bar b'shusha yachid. This is a swimming pool in somebody's backyard. So, of course, this bar, this guy is chayev. Mind you. Shehivish is meimov. He ruined the water. The lotion of the lotion lachrov. Rav is mechayev. Whether four is very mechayev. Tana v'chanan yisai yule rav. I have a riot to rav. That what? That only forwards are you chayev for the death of a shard, but not backwards. V'nofal at sheyipol derech lefil says in the Torah v'nofal. He fell the normal way of falling, which is head first. Mikan armor v'nofal lefana mikol akriya chayev. If he fell forward from the sound. From being startled from the noise inside the bar, Potter, backwards you are Potter, both happen in a bar. Oh, 
So now we're going to a beautiful sugya. What exactly happened here? And how does it work? Breaking it down into small pieces. If we just learned that if a bull falls forward from the sound inside the bar, the owner of the bar is chayev. Now, we understand, Rashi at least, understand, that we're talking about a random person, a construction guy, is working on a bar. He's trying to fix whatever he needs to fix in that bar. You have it all the time in a sewer system, whatever. A guy goes in, has to take care of stuff. He's not the owner of the bar, and he's drilling away. Now, who caused the death of this bull? Let's think about it. Who caused it? A bull's walking by. All of a sudden, he hears a jack arrow. Do, 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 do. He, he, he jumps, and he falls into the bar. Who killed the shark? No, Rabbi said, who killed the shark? Huh? The owner of the bar. He, the noise killed him. So there there be a no bar. Bar. And if there would be no noise, he wouldn't die. He got startled by the noise. He was walking normally. It wasn't a jackhammer. Whose fault is it? You want to say the jackhammer? No, no, no. He would have not fallen in anyway. No question. He wouldn't have fallen anyway. It says Meforish. It says you're right, but he wouldn't die without the guy making noise. Oh. Why can't you agree with me that it's both? Maybe it's both. A guy made a guy. Oh, oh, he's he's a grandma. He's a grandma, but he's the one that caused it. He's the one that caused it. A kid is walking next to the bar, walking, minding his own business. An adult comes and goes, Hoo! and he gets scared and he falls in. Who who killed him? The bar killed him. The bar didn't move. The adult that scared him and he fell in killed him. But without the bar, he wouldn't have died. So it's it's a combination of two things. So. That's right. Ask the Gemara of Amai. Why should the owner of the pit be chayev at all? Name a koira goramle. The guy that made the noise, he's the one that caused the damage. The problem is, you can't go after him. Why? Because he's a grama. He caused it. He didn't do anything. It's only the sound, like Jonathan said. So you can't go after him. So don't go after anyone. Why, why are you going after the owner of the bar? Omar Avshimi Barashi Omani Rabbi Nasani. The Omar Balabar Ezeki Ka'avid. So it goes like this. Rabbi Nasan, and we had this Rabbi Nasan, but he says a beautiful thing. Two major Kiddushim. He says like this. When you can't go after the guy that causes the damage, you go after the other guy. If there's two guys involved, so he says two halachas basically. Halacha number one, he says, Peres why are you sitting all the way? He's still a guest. We have extra seat here. People scared to sit next to you. Both sides, I see. <laughs> no, it's on that. The right is that seat. So, when you cannot go after, oh, oh, oh. When you can't go after so let's start this way. In this case, there were shutfim in the hezek. There was part, it was a partnership to cause the damage. The partnership. So since there's a partnership and I cannot go after the guy that caused the noise. Why can't I go after the guy that caused the noise? Because it's a grama. So I may like go after the guy that owns the pit. Chachamim on the other hand hold. Hey, there's no everything, whatever's left over. If the guy wants to, if the guy has to be mishtatif, let's say he'll pay a quarter, then the other guy will pay three quarters. If the guy pays zero, then the other guy pays a hundred. If the other guy pays fifty, the other guy pays fifty. If he pays a hundred, then the, the owner of the bar doesn't pay anything. It's like a shibud of Rav Nassim. Nassim says it. Oh, Rav Nassim. Rav Nassim. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to go through everything now. We're going to go through every, every step. We're going to break it down. Chacham, on the other hand, argue on two things. First of all, there's no partnership when it comes to damage. One of them is Chayev. Who's Chayev? The last guy. The guy that made the noise. The guy that made the noise is Potter. So, Potter. The, the guy that made the noise. Not the guy that owns the bar. And they also argue that if there's two people involved, or there's no two people, but let's say there were, you never throw, if there's literally two Shutfim that cause a Hezek, as we'll see a different case, like two bulls kill a, per, uh, kill a person, let's say, or a Shar, so it's 50-50. One doesn't take the blame for the other. Rabbi says no. 
If two people cause damage and you can't get payment from one, you'll go after the other one for the full amount. Cause damage. If you can't go after one, you get it from the second one. Now we have to prove that that's where Rav Nosson holds. So we learned, Here's the case. You have one bull that knocked another bull into somebody else's head. So this is Chachamim. The one that caused the damage. The bull of Ruvain that caused the damage. Over here you're asking me, Yosef, that the pit has nothing to do with it? They pushed him in, but without the pit, he wouldn't die. Okay. The owner of the pit is Potter. The guy, the last guy that caused the damage, he's Chayev 100%. There's no partnership here. Oh, there is a partnership. That's what you mainly wanted to say before. It's 50-50. But Tanya, we have a problem. Raboy said, listen to this problem. We're like five lines before it becomes white. Where do we come up with this number? Three quarters and a quarter. Not 50, 50, three quarters and a quarter. Oh, so let's think about it for a second. If the bull that caused the damage is a tam, how much does he have to pay? 50%. But on the 50%, he has a partner. There's a partner. Two of them did it. There's the owner of the bar and the owner of the shark. There's a part. So you take his 50% and you cut that in half. What is he left with? 25%. So he pays 25%. Now Muad should pay 100%. But he has a partner. So the partner takes half of that. So he only pays 50%. Ask the Gemara, Ubitam, Ikasava. Let's understand it even more. Ikasava, Haikule Zekova, the Haikule Zekova. Oh, so look at Rashi here. Rashi is very important to understand what's going on here. Rashi, 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 Rashi. The Gemara is saying that let's perhaps view this as if there's two 100%. When it comes to damage, who damaged? The owner of the bull caused 100% damage, and the owner of the pit caused 100% damage. On the surface, that makes no sense. How can you have two times 100% damage? It explains Rashi beautifully. You could have it. How? This is Rashi. The bull caused so much damage when he gored him that he would have died right there and then without a pit. He, the, the, the animal flew into the pit and got such a bang on his head that he would have died just from the pit. So each one killed him 100%. Uh, if that's how we view it, let, let's just, in terms of Allah, if that's how we view that, each one should take upon themselves 100% of the damage. So then what do we have? We have this chart right over. It's a simple chart. Uh, each one is 100%. Yeah? So, then each one should pay half. Each one should pay half. Now, oh no, this is wrong. Did I just, I messed this one up? Okay, so, if, if the guy owned, each one should pay half. Each one should pay half. So, how is Here's the question. If each one did 100% damage, let's, one step at a time. If each one did 100% of the damage, so, and he's a tam, how much should he pay? Half, 50%. He did 100% damage. There's no partner over here. Yeah, there's two partners. You're looking at a, the owner of the bar and the owner of the shark. But, but halakhically, each one did 100%. So forget the owner of the bar. I'm the owner of the shark. How much damage did I do? 100%. How much is a half of 
50%. So why is he paying a quarter, asked the Gemara. The quarter doesn't make sense. The three quarters, I could understand. Once, once he pays a quarter, whatever's left over, Reb Nassim holds, you have to pick up the slack. You're right, you should only pay 50%. But Reb Nassim holds that you always have to fill in the gap. Though the guy that lost his animal, he has to get paid in 100%. If you can't get it from the guy on the right, you get it from the guy on the left. That's what he says. But I don't understand, says the Gemara, why would he pay a quarter? That doesn't make sense. He caused 100% of the damage and the time pays 50% of 100. But they're not children because each one did 100%. What the Gemara is going to say is, but Lamai said they are Shutfim, and his partnership has to help him out. That's what the Gemara is going to say. But if you view it as 100 and 100, so the time has to pay 50%. Lu Yitzuyer, I can figure out why the time only pays a quarter. It's understood why the other guy pays three quarters, because Rav Nassim has a major Chiddush that the other guy has to pick up the slack. Okay, that's if you view that each one caused 100% damage. What if you view it as each one caused 50% damage? So 50% damage, half, how much is half of 50%? A quarter. That makes sense, check. But why in the world is the guy that only caused 100% of 50%, why is he paying three quarters? The Bala Bar only caused 50% damage. So why is he paying three quarters? Let the owner lose a quarter. Rabbi Nassim Dayanu. Rabbi Nassim is a Dayan. And he, he went all the way to the bottom of this and he figured this out. At the end of the day, each one did 100%. It's this chart right over. Everybody did 100%. And the question is, why should the guy that owns the bull only pay a quarter? The guy that owns the bull only pay a quarter. should pay 50%. Because... He's the, the owner of the shard that was supposed to pay 50%, he tells the owner of the pit, You are my partner. And if you are my partner, how are you helping me? Partnership means you need to relieve me of what I typically owe. Without you, I would pay 50%. So now that you're in the picture, you have to pick up half of what I owe. And half of what I owe is a quarter. So I pay a quarter, you pay three quarters. And if you want, I could say, that each one caused 50% damage. And if you because you're asking me, let, let the owner of the, the dead bull, let him lose a quarter. Because the owner of the dead bull says, Mr. Pit guy, I found my dead bull in your in your bar. You pay. You killed him. Whatever I could get from the owner of the bull that threw him in there, I'll take, which is a quarter. Memela, what do you see here? So Reb Nossin says, the owner of the pit pays three quarters. You see from here that what? Reb Nossin holds that the one guy has to pick up the slack when the other guy is not paying. So now let's go back to our case. We forgot uh, for a second what happened there. We had a case where a guy was jackhammering in a pit. And he caused the bull to fall into the pit. So you have two people here that are chayev. So according to Reb Nassim, both of them should pay. Right? We said, why is he chayev? The guy that, I'm sorry, not both of them. Only the guy that owns the pit is going to pay. Why? Because Reb Nassim holds that when you cannot get money out of the guy that's jackhammering. Why? Because he's only a grama. You're going to go after the other guy and take everything from him. Where do you see that? From our case, that you go after the guy and take three quarters. So, Mele, Chacham, who argue? Rabbi, I think about this for a second. A, a animal was walking by, a guy inside the pit was jackhammering, startled him, the, the bull fell in and died. The guy that caused the noise, that caused him to fall in, he's part because he's a grama. What a Chacham hold? How much does the guy that owned the bull get? Zero. Why? Because there's no, there's no partnership in the damage. Who caused the damage? Mr. Jackhammer. He's Potter. So the guy that owns the bull gets zero. A guy put a stone next to a pit. He's standing from the side. 
thought it would be funny, take some videos. Somebody sent me a video the other day of like in some, some I don't know where, there was a, a metal gate in the middle of a bike path. And he puts a video camera there. And every, I don't know, you just see one bike after another smashing into this gate at such speeds. People are hitting this metal gate and flying. Now, I don't know how often it is, but the guy sits there with the video camera. It's Gishmak. Yeah, 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 steady camera. It doesn't sit there like this. Of course, it's from this exact same position. Ah, it's funny, you put it on YouTube, you get a million hits because you see people smashing their faces into the concrete. So that's what this guy did. He put a little stone next to the bar. Let's see how many people he could put in the bar. Ubar shor v'ninskal bar v'nafal bar, and a guy fell into the pit, a shor fell into the pit. Bono v'nachleis yor v'nasen v'nir v'rabonam. Oh, l'chayra, this is the same exact v'nachleik is because I caused this bull to fall into the pit. Says Gemara Pshita, of course, it's the same case. We have a partnership according to Rabbanah and according to Rabbanah. Malat same also mu dom abal bar l'bal shor ilavir didi tori didi chavakotale. Maybe it's different. In our case, the bull gored the other bull. He was able to kill him with that. Plus, the the pit was able to kill him on his own also. Each one did 100 percent damage. The owner of the stone could say, A small stone that you trip, so the bull would have fell on the floor. You have a mitka ba, have an oven he would have jumped up and walked away. Nothing would have happened. It's your bar that killed him. My stone did zero. He says, No, then the day, it's your stone. So we have a partnership here. Your stone caused it. And there's a famous, I just want to say this quickly, because there's a beautiful story in the Gemara, a few stories about Antoninus and Rebbe. Antoninus was best friends with Rebbe, he was the king. And the Gemara of the Zara describes how he used to go visit Rebbe every day, and he had to kill two of his slaves every time he went to visit him, one on the way there, one on the way back, all mice. One of the things he asked him in Sanhedrin, yeah, tunnel, yeah, tunnel, talking about tunnels, yeah. One of the things he asked him is, why is a person chayiv liyamadin? Because when a person dies, you look, watch his body, you look at his body, body doesn't move, can't do an avera. What causes life in the body? The neshama. So go after the neshama. So you go after the neshama, and the neshama says, look at me, I'm flying around there in Shemaim, I didn't do any averas. It's the body. So on that, Rebbe told him, like Yosef Verman, who just walked out, said, that it's Moshul, the guy that has a paradise, and there's a partnership between the guy that can't walk and the guy that can't see. And that's the, the, the body, together with the Shama. So the guy went, and he says, okay, you can't walk, you can't see, put them together, and he punished both of them together, so to the body and the Shama. It's Shnaim Shasu. Okay, huh? She deserved Nasan. MMA when it comes also to maybe stealing a menaira, driving a car, this mamish, that's the guy that could walk, we're in the guy that could see. It's Shnaim Shasu when it comes to Gnebi al Chayev. Says Gemar, it's my sharp, sharp, Sulem Gdashim. You have one sharp and one sharp, Sulem Gdashim Shinaku. Sponsored by Jonathan Stefanski to remind the Ayulam that the end of the year is coming up. And you should give nicely to, um, no, to what's the name of that? Uh, Smicha Schaver. That one should give to Smicha Schaver. Shavir Shavir Sulaim Gdashim Shinakhu. So this is very interesting. What's the Shavir? The Gemara explains, it's not really the Gemara, they say it's stuck in later on. My new Shavir Bachar Delay Paraklay. It could be any kind of Hegdish, uh, but the Gemara goes into. Abhar, the firstborn that goes to the Kayin, the Kayin goes and brings it to the Beis Hamikdash, to, and brings it as a carp and gets to eat from it. But he's better off if it befalls a mum, a mum happens to the Bukhar, he gets to eat the whole thing at home. The thing is that if this Shar, Psulam Mikdashim, causes damage, he doesn't have to pay. It has a halach of Hegdash, doesn't have to pay. And so too, if you damage him, you don't have to pay. So now, think about it for a second. There's a story here. Here, take a look at this video, and I need your help. It's a riddle. You have two bulls that throw another bull into a pit. One is 100% potter, because it's Psulei HaMikdashim. Excuse the, uh, that I did. Yeah, it's not a Yoshi thing. The first part is Yoshi. That's just to, to understand. The guy on the left is a Psulei HaMikdashim. He's a 100% potter. The guy on the right is 100% Chayef. Now, I'm going to throw something at you and you're going to tell me what happened there. The guy on the right 
has to pay 50%. Why? What would happen? He's a Tom? Oh, uh, Tom, according to who? According to Ibn Nasi, you have to pick up the, the slack for the other guy. So if he pays 50%, what happened? Uh, no, you know what? No, this is not a good picture. You're right. There's no bar here. It's not cool. This is, this is wrong. I just realized. This is wrong. We got to take this out. Because there's no bar here. Okay? Bar is confusing. They cause damage without a bar. They, they kill the bull without a bar. Okay, so let's see the Gemara because we're running out of time here. It's a riddle. There's different steps to the riddle. You have to understand, why would he be chayiv? If I tell you he's chayiv 25%, what happened? If I tell you he's chayiv 50%, what happened? There's different ways to look at it. It depends if you're going with Reb Nassim, that you're chayiv for the other guy also, you have to pick up the other guy's slack, or not. It depends if he's a tam or a muad. These are the different cases, okay? So, Abay Omar Mishal and Chatzin Ezek, Rabbin Omar Mishal and Rabbi Nezek, Yichayev 25% only. Abay says Yichayev 50%. Says the Gemara, we can explain like this. Hava Hava Tam. It's talking about a Tam. A Tam typically would pay 50% of the damage. But it's a partnership, Rabbi Yisai. A partner has to pick up. Together, they only pay 50%. And if one of them is a Psul Mugdashim, so the other one only pays half of a half. If he's a Tam, he pays 50%. But he has a partner, so he only has to pay a quarter. Hockey Rabbana, when you only pay a quarter, it goes according to Rabbana that you don't pick up any slack. Vakir Ibn Nasan. And the Ravina says you have to pay 50% because I'm paying for my friend. I'm paying for the Psulam Mikdashim guy. Or you could say, Hockey Rabbana. It goes like Rabbana that you don't, pay, you don't pick up any slack. Makes a lot of sense. Ravina says, that you pay a quarter because it goes according to, it's talking about a tam. And a tam only pays half of a half because there's a partner here. Or, Abayi says, bimuad. Muad means he has to pay 50%. Typically, you pay 100%, but since he has a partner, he pays 50%. So it says, Abayi, you have to pay 50%. Igadamri, now we're going to make it more interesting. That's, those are not the two amounts. Before it was a quarter and 50%. Now we're going to a different amount. 50% or 100%. How do you explain that? Rabbanon hold. There's no shutfis. So there's no shutfis. You pay only half of 100% because there's, part- there's a partnership. I don't, this, I don't have. Oh. Kirabanon, sorry. You have to pay half. Your half. Rabbanon says you have to pick up the guy's slack. You pay. A hundred percent. You have to pick up the slack. You have to pay Nezik Shalom. You have to pay the full amount. You should have paid 25%. You're picking up the slack for your friend, so you pay Chatzin Nezik. This is in the bar. This makes more sense. A, a, a bull and a human being pushed this bull into the pit. How many Mazikim are there here? Three, the human being, the bull, and the pit. Therefore, Linyan is Zakin when it comes to damages, Kulon Chayavim. You pay 33%. The human being pays 30%. The owner of the bull pays 33%. The owner of the pit pays 33%. Linyan are Bad Varim. Shoreyayu. Linyan are Bad Varim. The other things, Nazik we spoke about. Sari Vishavis Boishes with Mevladois. So it says by Sari Vishavis Boishes, it says, Vish Kite Mumba Misoi. It must be a human being. Only human being pays for damages. Now, Stam, a real, a real quick question for not damages. Sorry. Tsar Ripu Vishavis Boishes. I want to just go back for a second and ask the Oilam a beautiful Shiloh. If a human being and a bull push somebody into the pit, the Gemara says, Chayev, 33%. Question, we learned the other day, yesterday. Shar v'loi Adam. If a human being falls into a pit, you don't pay for him. Oh, says Rebdo, you hear? This guy's a Tamut Chachem. Your son is a Tamut Chachem. Always. For Nezek, you are Chayev. So you got to remember this. Shar v'loi Adam falling into a pit. Is only when he dies, you're not chayef. 
But when a human being falls in the pit and gets a big zet, you are chayv. Okay. Lina bar dvarim, tzari b'shev z'boishas, udmei vladois, because it says in the Pasuk of Chiyin, not to anashim, v'nok v'yishara, and she lost her pregnancy from anashim, from men, not from a bull. Adam, chayv, a person's chayv, shar bar pater, and the shar in the bar of pater. Lina, no, well, it depends. According to Rav Nassim, you hide the whole thing. Linyan koifer, when a human being is killed, ushloishim shel eved, then that's alacha im eved yigach hashar, then he pays shloishim kasef. Shar chayav, adam ubar p'tur, why is a human being potter from the shloishim? Come live with the rabbi, and he says Rashi, he's chayav misa. There's no koifer by a person. Linyan kalim, let's say they threw kalim into the bar, v'shar p'sulam ikdashim, and you threw a bachar that has a mom into the pit. Adam v'shar chayavim, ubar pater. Why? Why bar pater? Chamar v'loi kelim. My time on my krov, I may see a loi. What's the reason by Psalm Magdash that falls into a pit? You don't pay? Because it says, v'am see a loi. Look at the positive. Bala bar yishalim, by a bar it says, v'am see a loi. Look at this pasuk. What do you do with kachim? You eat it. What if it dies? You have no right to do anything with it, but bury it. Could I give it to my dog? No. So if I can't give it to my dog, so then I don't have that it's not yours. The dead, the dead axe is not yours. You can't do anything with it. To put it in a grave is not considered yours. Yours is when you can give it to your animal. So Mamela, when I don't have Vamisi Eloi, then I don't have to pay for it. Says Gemara Lamerava, maybe this whole idea of Psulam Yudashim that your potter is Pasha to Rava. You're telling me that he knew it's so simple. He asked the question though, the by Rava, yes, short Psulam Yudashim Shanov Alabar Mao. What happens when this part that has a mum falls into a pit? What was his question? He knew about this Pasik. He says, but what is the Pasik referring to? Like we just said, that your potter, when, when Sulaim Gdashim falls in, oh, he dilma, perhaps you can learn the Pasuk differently. There's a major chiddush over here. The owner of this bull, Nebuch, has to rent a crane, pay $1,000 to take mm-hmm. his animal out, refrigeration, trucking, grave, the whole thing, all that goes on the, on the guy that lost his animal. How do I know? Maybe the mazik has to pay for the crane. It makes a lot of sense. You, you killed my animal, you pay for the crane. No, that's a pasik. You need a pasik for that. So Rava didn't know. What do I learn with Vamezi Eloi? What's the bio of the Pashto? Yeah, okay, he had the question. But once he got to our sugi, he already knew the answer. That from Vamezi Eloi, I learned that by Psula Mikdashim, you're potter if you kill it. But how does he you know this major chiddush that the nizik has to pay for all the damages in the crane? Rabbi Isai, it says another pasuk. And all the way down the pasuk is Vamezi Eloi. It says it again. As the Gemara, so maybe I learn that Psulam Igdashim, you potter when you kill from the shar. And Mimela what? The other Vamezi Eloi is talking about a bar. So I don't know that if it falls into a bar, you potter. Maybe I'll learn that if a shark kills him, uh, Epsilon Yudashim, you potter. How do I know which Vamesi Eloi to use as the Gemara? My chaz is Vamesi Eloi, the shark, Mavis, the bar, 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 maybe flip it around, learn that by the metabolism of the from bar, and therefore if a Epsilon Yudashim falls into a bar, I don't know that he's potter, Mr. Potter, Gabi Bar. It makes sense that he's potter when he falls into a bar. Why? Hoyle potter by Isakalim. We see that there's a concept of being potter if. Caleb fall in, unbelievable, a car driving down the highway, falls into a bar that you deliberately placed in the middle of the highway. The guy is potter. Big chiddush. Well, there's a major chiddush also by Ashar that he doesn't pay the full amount, only half. Says the Gemara, yeah, but you don't see by Ashar that he's potter completely. You only see that he's potter 50. Therefore, it makes a lot more sense to learn from a bar that Absalom is completely potter. A boy side. Have a wonderful day. We'll say Tehillim Kavana. Rabbi Sai, a lot, a lot of Yidin are getting killed every day. It's not your volume. We have to say, Shira Malis Mikavana. Shira Malis. It's a soy na yelorim. I am your Ezri. Ezri mi madino. You say Shomayim Voret.
אל ייתן אמר דרג לכו היונום שמרחו הנה לא ינום ולא ישון שמי ישראל אדינוי שמרחו אדינוי צריכו היה לי מנחו יוי ממה שמש לא יקקו ויורא ירבה לא ילו אדינוי שמחו מכל לא ישמור אס נפשכו אדינוי שמור שיסחו ויחו אמר טוב ידי לו אכן כל בית ישראל הנסורים בצורו והשיביו רואים דם בין ביום ובין ביבושו, מוקים ירחם עליהם, ויצאים לצורך לבוכו מאפל ולאור ומשיב לגאולו, אשתו בגלל הזמן קוראים, ונאמר אמן, שקויח, שקויח וקומינג.